Hmm. Uh, too old. Uh, too hot. Way too hot. I'm gonna grab two of these. Eh, maybe. Yeah, a little bit too predictable. Ah, there we go. Now that's the ticket. The GT730 was a fine low-end card when it came out. Well, at least the GK208 variant like this one. But this card's time in the spotlight is over. It's over six years old and really starting to show its age. That makes this GT730 the perfect candidate for an overclocking adventure. And like all things worth doing, we won't be doing it the easy way. MSI Afterburner is a fun tool for casual overclockers, but we'll be using something with a little bit more control. I'll be refraining from BIOS mods for now, as I still need this card to survive for future testing. But we'll take it as far as it can go within reason. And as you'll see, with a bit of patience and the right software, it can go pretty far. The GT730 that is our victim today is a GK208 GT730 by PNY. It's a plain jade model that has a mere 1GB of GDDR5 at 2500MHz and a 64-bit bus giving it a meager 40GB per second memory bandwidth. The graphics core has 384 Kepler cores with 16 TMUs and 8 render output units, all at a paltry clock of 902MHz. I tried to boot up Cyberpunk 2077, even at the minimum settings at 1024 by 768 we could only reach an 8 FPS average. It's not even playable for a hardy low-end gamer. Maybe our overclock will be able to help with that. We also ran 3D Mark Skydiver. It's a perfect match for benchmarking and stressing the GPU during the overclocking process. So after running it, I got a baseline so we would know how much, if at all, the overclock affects our performance. As you'll see by the little exclamation mark, we have older drivers running. I found them to be more stable and allowed for a higher overclock than the newest ones. And intentional or not, I've also found that the newer NVIDIA drivers have reduced the performance of Kepler cards just a little bit. We'll be able to see this in the 3D Mark scores after I switch to the newest drivers in order to get a recordable run. Anyhow, enough rambling. Our stock 3D Mark Skydiver run gave us a total score of 5,617 with a graphics score of 5,190. It's a solid run, but it's only going to get better. Just for fun, I wanted to see how far we could overclock it in MSI Afterburner. If you're wondering why I was downplaying MSI Afterburn earlier, it's because of the artificially limited options it lets you use for overclocking. In this program, at least on this card, we can't adjust the voltage or P states at all, which is less than ideal if you want a maximum overclock out of your card without a BIOS mod. Either way, we were able to get a hefty overclock of 235 MHz on the core and 200 on the memory. Anything past that and it got unstable. This card was eager to go further, but it just needed the voltage nudge to get there. But at this overclock, we managed to get a 3D Mark score of 6,740 and a graphics score of 6,219, which is a 20% overclock over stock. Most of the time, I'd be satisfied with this result and call it a day, but not here on Socket Sanctuary, we're going to take it as far as this BIOS will let us. So, in order to take this further, I downloaded an old defunct piece of software called NVIDIA Inspector. There will be a download in the link description for those curious. But just as a disclaimer, if you fry your GPU because you downloaded it and slammed the voltage slider all the way to the right, I'm not responsible. That's up to you guys. Anyhow, this is a fantastic piece of software that was revived by the community. It allows much more precise control over your overclock. It even allows you to choose which p-state you want to overclock. In our case, we'll be choosing P0, this is the high performance P state, and it allows for a gigahertz to play with on the core clock and two and a half gigahertz on the memory, and unlocks some voltage for us to toy around with as well. For the first step, we bumped the voltage by 25 millivolts. After that, we managed to increase the core another 45 megahertz, and we managed to squeeze about 10 more megahertz out of the memory for a 210 megahertz overclock over stock. With this, we saw an additional 4% improvement over the last overclock, but we are far from done. 
I bumped up the voltage another 100 millivolts for a total of a 125 millivolt offset. With the power envelope increased, so did our clock speeds. We managed to get a whopping 405 megahertz overclock on the core and the same 210 megahertz on the RAM. With this, our 3D Mark score shot up to 7,460 and 6,938 on the graphics. That is a 45% increase over the stock core clock of 902 MHz for a total of 1.307 GHz. Not bad for a GPU most people wouldn't even give a second thought. At this point the GPU was actually starting to heat up due to the extra voltage we were pumping into it, but I kept the fan pegged at 100% so the temps never really rose much past 50 degrees Celsius, which is well within the safe operating zone. With a 150 millivolt offset, we were able to bump the core up another 40 megahertz for a total of a 445 megahertz overclock, giving us a total of 1.35 gigahertz on the core. With that, our Skydiver score jumped to 7,580 and 7,053 for the graphics. We finally managed to break 7,000 on the graphics, which means our effective performance increase is hovering around 35%. The voltage slider isn't pegged, so let's see what it can do with all we give it. At the maximum voltage offset of 175 millivolts, we got a blissful 470 megahertz overclock on the core for a total core clock of 1,372 megahertz over its base clock of 902 megahertz. That is a gargantuan 52% overclock over stock. The RAM was still sitting around 2,710 megahertz, and it couldn't be pushed much further. Even a megahertz or two more, and it became unstable. But at this overclock, we got a 3D Mark score of 7,665 and a graphics score of 7,151. But sadly, due to the old drivers, the results couldn't be validated. So I got the new drivers, and after installing them, I couldn't quite reach the same overclock. With the new validated drivers, I could only reach a 460 MHz overclock for a total of 1,362 MHz on the core. And with that overclock, I got a 7,627 in 3D Mark with a graphics score of 7,105. After validating the results, I decided to take a gander and see how I stacked up against other GT730s, on the Skydiver benchmark. And to my utter shock, there I was on the first page, number 16 for overall score, and that's with a relatively weak CPU compared to some of the others. Even when compared on the graphics score alone, it's ranked number 25 in the world. Either this particular GT730 is a golden chip, or people haven't been getting the most out of their GT730s. So I offer this challenge to you. If you've got a GT730, let me know what you can overclock too. Because if I can do this in my pajamas with a cup of coffee in my hand, I'm absolutely certain one of you out there can do better. So I'd love to see your overclocks. Head on over to the Socket Sanctuary Discord, link in the description, and show off what chops you've got. It doesn't have to be a GT730 either. I'd love to see whatever you guys can get as an overclock over stock for whatever card you've got. In my next overclocking video, which ought to be just as fun, I'll make sure to showcase what the community has done. If you like this sort of content, make sure to hit the like button. If you dislike it, make sure to let me know what I can do better. Leave a comment, I always read them. That'll be it for this episode. Thank you folks for watching. May your frame rates be high and your prices low. And I'll catch you folks next time.